occasionally when I'm out in the world just going about my life, I come across something that would make for a great photograph. And I uh, like to make a little note of it to come back later with proper camera gear. So I have an app um, on my iPhone, GPS app. It's called a Gaia GPS. And occasionally I'll drop a little waypoint and title it, you know, hey, cool old building, come back and photograph. Uh, nice view, would look good in spring. Things like that. So then I got these little points all around the Southland telling me where to go back and take pictures. Well, I have one here that simply says, goddamn sailboat in a deteriorating shed in the middle of the desert. That's a pin that I've been looking to come back to for a while now. Because there's a freaking sailboat in a deteriorating shed in the middle of the desert. So I've come back today to photograph it. But I'm going to be sleeping over tonight. Uh, I think I found a decent enough campsite. I'll be sleeping in my car. Um, I made a, a pretty awesome bed platform for my forerunner here that uh, can be completely removed. Um, and I can install it in about 10 minutes. And then uh, that makes it a little easier to go camping. I don't have to pitch a tent when I'm out there. I'm pretty damn proud of it, I'm not gonna lie. It's got under lighting, uh, my tray still pulls out so all my stuff can store underneath and then I can just sleep on top. And uh, I've put it through its paces a couple times already but that's what I'm gonna be sleeping on tonight. And uh, there's rain off in the distance here and uh, that, I think that might be coming towards me, I don't know. But uh, hopefully that won't rain me out. Now I actually scouted this location pretty recently. Uh, on a, I was up camping with friends and I decided to stop by and figure out what composition to do so that when I come back for this trip, I know where to put my camera. So I, with my iPhone, I uh, pulled up my uh, Viewfinder Mark II app where I can put in my 6x17 camera, figure out what lens to use, figure out where to stand, figure out how tall I need to be, and uh, I think I got a good composition figured out. But, as we'll see in just a few minutes, there's a couple of issues with photographing this boat. I'm not going to be breaking any laws or anything by taking these pictures, but I generally don't like to attract attention to myself when I'm taking photos. And this spot happens to be right next to the highway. So I would like to remain relatively undetected, which is why I'm wearing my uh, desert camo getup. Tan pants, tan hat, olive green shirt, same color as the brush. That way, no one's going to see me. I'll blend right into the surroundings like a Navy SEAL. All they'll see is a giant 6x17 camera on a tripod all by itself, but I'll be nowhere to be found. It's rad, isn't it? I don't know why this thing is way out in the middle of the desert, but I'm sure glad it is, because it looks freaking awesome. But as you can see, it's behind a fence, and that's my biggest obstacle here. Um, so I'm gonna have to shoot over the top of the fence. Luckily I have a real tall tripod and I brought a step stool. So I'm prepared, but the thing is, the compositions from that high up are not, not excellent. In fact, the perfect composition is like, like right there, right, right there. But it's on the other side of the fence. Now, to be honest, there's more holes in this fence than a, a block of Swiss cheese. Uh, in fact, a whole portion of it is just plowed down. I could drive my car in here if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that for a few reasons. Number one is uh, there are no trespassing signs and it is private property. And I don't make a habit of breaking the law on video and then putting it on YouTube, because I'm not dumb. Um, secondly, it is someone's private property, so I just don't want to disrespect them by just making myself at home uh, without permission. But then finally, you know, in America, there's something like 80 million gun owners. I'm gonna go way out on a limb and say the type of person who owns this kind of property might be one of those 80 million. So uh, best play it safe, safe, especially if I'm gonna be out here in the dark. So because of the height required to get over this fence, I'm very limited on the compositions I can do and the lenses I can use. Right now I'm using a 300 millimeter uh, Nikon lens. I'm not, I'm not ecstatic about this composition, but I think it's the best I can do right now with the way the cloud cover is. Um, 
Hopefully it'll be okay. This cloud cover isn't making things any easier. Light is constantly changing, just making metering a nightmare. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me some light. Right. Uh, up and down and up and down. I hate having to work from a step stool. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This picture sucks. The composition's all wrong, the light's terrible. I probably shouldn't have even taken this photo because I knew it was bad at the time, but I guess I just wanted to do some warm ups for when the light got better and I could do a more thought out composition. All right, so I switched to a different composition here and uh, it's gonna require the 210 millimeter lens, not the 300. When I scouted these compositions, this one was the one that I thought would be like the hero shot, the money shot. Um, so this is the one I'm actually most looking forward to doing. That one with the 300 millimeter, uh, I don't think it's gonna be quite right. A little too tight, a little too zoomed in. This has more of the, the scene. It's got palm trees on the right, the boat off to the left. I think this will be a stronger composition. This composition is probably gonna be best at dusk or at dawn. The light's a little too harsh uh, shooting into it like this. So I might have to wait until the sun drops. <clears throat> Kind of depends what the clouds do, though. I swear, there is nothing more frustrating than having an incredible subject, but feeling like you just can't get a good composition on it. That's how I'm feeling right about now. Even this 210 millimeter composition, uh, I don't know, just not, not digging it. But I can't tell if it's because the light isn't good yet or because the composition's not good. So I'm just gonna have to wait it out until dusk and then hopefully, once dusk rolls around, I'll actually like the composition. That's a little hard to judge right now. But I'll tell you what, screw this whole desert camouflage thing, man. I'm freaking cold. Uh, that's what we need. Yeah, that's the stuff. The combination of the setting sun behind this rainstorm in the distance made for a really beautiful sunset. It just lit up with super vivid colors. But unfortunately, all those vivid colors didn't really do me any good because I didn't feel like that color palette was jiving well with this composition. But before the colors flared up, I managed to get this photo here. For the briefest of moments, the sun peeked out from behind those clouds and shined a beautiful ray of light just past the mesa in the background. Now, when I first visualized this composition, this is not the type of light I pictured. I've always pictured it as a cold, dawn or dusk light color palette, not this kind of warmer sunset light. But I actually am really happy with how this turned out. It was kind of like a serendipitous moment with the sun peeking through right then and there and these clouds formed just perfectly to create a gap right above the boat. And I really like how everything came together. Although this wasn't the original plan, this ended up being one of my favorite versions of this picture. Well, that was a beautiful sunset. Those clouds on the horizon there picked up all sorts of gorgeous colors. My camera's pointing west, and uh, since the sun sets in the west, this whole landscape has been backlit since like late afternoon, which isn't the best light for this. So I'm hoping tomorrow morning, um, when the sun rises in the east over there, it's gonna illuminate this much more evenly. And uh, you know, as long as the weather holds out and all that, I think I'll get better light tomorrow morning. So then I'll come out bright and early, the crack of dawn, and I'm sure I'll be even colder than I am now. It is cold. Man, it's going to be uncomfortable out there. I'm here plenty early. Got plenty of time before the sun fully rises. So I think I'm just going to camp out in my warm car here for a few more minutes before I put myself through that misery. I've got my fleece pants on underneath my regular pants, so I'm actually pretty toasty. The weather's crystal clear, that's excellent. Uh, no clouds to mess up my composition or block the light. So we're off to a good start. I'm feeling pretty good. 
and I get to use my step stool again. Lucky me. Nice and rickety, just how I like it. I'll be doing the same composition that I did yesterday. So that means using the 210 millimeter again. Now the real tricky part is composing the shot in the dark like this. Ground glass is hard enough to see as it is. If there's no light, it makes it almost impossible. Ooh, need to be a little lower. Yep, just a hair. So with this early dawn light, I'm going for like that real blue, cool tones you get in the morning. Uh, which should have kind of a cool mood to it. Get the feeling there's gonna be a little bit of hustle this morning. God, I'm feeling really good about this dawn light. I think yesterday just wasn't quite the right lighting. Don't know why I moved my step stool. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm feeling so good about this light. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm feeling so good about it. Okay. It's 11 and 2 thirds at 4 seconds. Oh, no, 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 no. 16 and 2 thirds at 8 seconds. Here we go. Kodak Portra experiences reciprocity failure for any exposure beyond one second. I use an app called Reciprocity Timer to calculate the correction, and on my eight second exposure here, I had to use 15 seconds. Well, I'm happy to say that that early morning light was the perfect lighting for this subject. This picture came out pretty much just as I had pre-visualized it from the get-go. I love the cool, simple color palette you pretty much just have blues, grays, and the faintest of tans. And not only do I like the simplicity of the color palette, but I feel like it really captures the mood I was after for this photo. You have this cold, desolate, strange scene out in the middle of the desert, and I feel like these uh, cool tones really heighten that mood. The idea for this photo had been rattling around in my brain for months, so it's a relief to make it a reality. But more than that, I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. Just a short time later, I made this exposure. Now it's incredible to see what just a few minutes will do to the light. You can see it's still that soft pre-sunrise light, but it's much warmer now with a very different color palette. I like this picture too, but it's just not quite the right match for the mood and color palette that I was after. When the sun finally broke above the horizon, I made this exposure. In my opinion, this light is too harsh for this subject. The directional light that you get from an open sun like this results in shadows that just clutter up the subject. Like take a look at the boat in the shed. All the shadows casted onto the boat by those wood planks make it difficult to even tell what you're looking at. Like if you didn't know that was a boat in a shed, you might not be able to figure out what you're seeing. So I think that softer pre-sunrise light was the right match. This is just a little too chaotic for this subject. And that is yet another roll down. I normally wouldn't take this many pictures of the same composition, but the light is changing by the minute. So I just want to make sure I capture it at the right time. But this is a few more pictures than I would normally do. Well, I must say, I think this might be one of the most interesting subjects I've ever photographed. And I feel lucky that I got to come out here and do this today. Um, you know, it might sound kind of ridiculous, but when I find something like this, such a unique scene, um, I feel kind of a responsibility to go photograph it. Uh, like, it's kind of my duty to go expose it on film. Something uh, feels good about knowing that the way it is right now in this awesome state of semi-deterioration, that's now permanently uh, enshrined on film. Feels good, you know? Feels like I uh, accomplished something. And I hope you feel good for coming along with me on this little trip. As always, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.
Oh, I'm sorry. Did you, did you think the video was done? Did you think it was over? Because I did a little music sting and I rolled credits? Well, guess what? Bonus! That's right. Found something else to shoot. Just up the road from the old boat, I found this uh, skeleton of some, some structure. I think uh, probably a house, that's my guess. Um, but I got my camera set up here with a 90 millimeter lens, which is uh, quite wide angle for 6x17. And so I have my uh, center ND filter uh, screwed in as well. The center ND helps even out the natural vignette that you get on a wide angle large format lenses. So it'll be a more even exposure, exposure corner to corner. And you'll see I'm shooting from a pretty low angle here. Uh, I normally wouldn't take a picture like this from so low, but the reason I'm doing that is there's a mountain ridge behind the house and uh, I'm getting low enough so that the ridge can be seen all the way through this skeleton of an old structure. Um, if I go too high, the ridge just blends right into the roof and then you lose it. And by having it lower down where you can see it through the house, it creates more depth and separation between the background. My wide angle lens is also helping me create some separation here because as I get closer to the subject, the background will get further away from the foreground. If I get further away from the subject, they'll compress and the background will look closer to the foreground. Um, that's why you get that flattened out look with longer uh, focal lengths. But since I'm using wide angle and I'm shooting low and I'm pretty close to the building, I'm getting good separation between the foreground and background. I'm doing a straight on symmetrical composition, which I know, big shocker there, Nick. Uh, I might seem like a one trick pony sometimes. I, I really like doing these panoramic uh, six by 17s of a building straight on right down the middle. I don't know what it is. That's just my natural urge, my natural inclination. I've learned not to fight those urges too much because uh, that probably will be the composition I end up liking the most. Uh, but I also like it because I took uh, a picture of an old garage on Route 66 that I shot the same way, straight on right down the middle. And this has a very similar color palette. It's also in the desert. It's also a rundown building. And so there'll be uh, They'll, they'll link up, you know, they'll, they'll look like they're from the same set, uh, which I like. So stylistically, they'll kind of blend together, and I think that's, that's cool. So we got it all framed up here, got it metered. Now it's time to expose. And because the sun's off to the left, I'm, I'm having to work pretty hard to, to shield it so I don't get lens flare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, this is what I was after. I do feel like it carries on the series of the Route 66 old garage photo I did. And I kind of like doing that, you know, as I travel throughout the deserts of California, Nevada, and Arizona. I like building on previous collections, and I feel like this is a good addition. So there you go. That's the end of the video for real this time. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.